Do not invest any money in the stock market. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly, exactly why that's the case. I'm going to 100% convince you that your money is better invested somewhere else in the stock market. I'm going to show you what to invest in, all right? And I'm going to show you how you can achieve the same returns that you expect in the stock market in half the time with less risk, all right, and generate passive income. All right, I know this sounds too good to be true, but I'm gonna, I have a chart. I'm gonna show you the numbers. We're gonna work through it and you can look it up. You can test it with chat GPT. It's good enough now with the, the latest version where you can run the numbers in there and it will give you the result. It will give you the answer so you can, you can check this for yourself, okay? So I got a question from some coaching clients of mine when I was on a call with them and they said, hey John, you had an offhand comment about real estate being superior to stock market. Did you mainly mean the 15 to 25% potential annual yield in real estate compared to the stock market's 10 to 15%? Okay. Is there something more to your offhand comment, something about stock uh, don't always uh, have to go up or something that's more systematically concerning? The reason why is this, partic this is particularly interesting to me is that uh, recently, uh, I just decided not to worry about real estate for the foreseeable future, at least for the next one to three years, and only put my money in the indexes instead. <laughs> indices instead. Not the main consideration is the time required to find deals, and that uh, the and that the business is a big lever. Okay, so <clears throat> let me let me just address this. All right, and I figured it'd be best to just record a video for everyone so that. I could answer this question once and, and give a, a real definitive answer to this since that's what I was going to do anyway. All right. So first of all, what they're asking here is, am I saying, because, because in this coaching call, I said, you know, you should really be investing in, in real estate versus the stock market. All right. And, uh, and, and I said that the stock market is really not a good investment and that the return is that you can get much better returns, right? And so they're asking, they're saying, okay, well, do you mean that getting 15 to 25% uh, potential annual yield in the real estate compared to stock markets, 10 to 15% is, is why? And the answer is, is actually that you're not getting a 15 to 25% annual yield in real estate. You're getting a much higher yield. It's a much higher yield. And when you compound this over time, it magnifies greatly, right? So every percentage point of return that you get when you compound your money makes a huge, huge difference, all right? Now I'm gonna tell you real quick here, all right? There is only one way, all right, to become wealthy. There's only one way to become rich, okay? And that is to understand the power of compounding interest but what I call the wealth triangle, right? So there's three aspects of the wealth triangle, all right? And you have to have two of the three in order to become rich. So what are the three? The first is time, the second one is initial capital, and the third is rate of return, or the interest rate you're getting, right? Your return on your investment, your ROI, okay? You need to have two of those three things in order to become wealthy, to make a lot of money. What do I mean by this? All right, let's, let's examine this real quick, all right? So let's say that you have a lot of time. We're gonna give you a whole bunch of time. We're gonna give you 100 years to compound, all right? And we're gonna say that you have very little interest. You're, you're only getting a 2% return on your money, okay? But you have a lot of money, all right? You start off with a million dollars, or let's say you start off with $500,000, okay? Getting a 2% return for 100 years, that's gonna yield a large amount of money, right? We can go into a, a compound interest calculator. You can do the calculation. In fact, here, let, let's just do it here real quick. And, uh, and we can take a look at this and you can see what this, what this looks like, all right? And I'm gonna show you in a second uh, the answer to this question that, that I said at the beginning, but I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna walk you through this first so that you totally understand this and you totally get this. This is what I'm gonna show you in a second here. But let me, let me just change this, okay? And what we're gonna look at, uh, first of all, is the compound interest calculator, okay? So I'm just gonna pick one here. There's, there's some better ones, but let, let's, let's just use this, okay? So you should be able to see this now, all right? So let's say that you have $10,000, or no, 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 we'll do our, our scenario, $500,000, okay? 
and we're gonna we're gonna do this for a hundred years, okay? And our rate of return is just gonna be two percent, okay? We're not gonna contribute anything extra to this, all right? We'll put zero here. All right. What's gonna happen, okay, is that you're gonna contribute your five hundred thousand dollars, but you're gonna you're gonna turn it into three point six million dollars in a hundred years, okay? That's that's pretty good. Right, <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I don't have a hundred years. Now we can compound this daily, and it'll it'll make a little bit of a difference here. Actually, maybe not much of a difference. Yeah, not much of a difference, right? So a lot of times people are like, oh, it's can compound it continuously. It doesn't really matter that much. Okay, um, okay. So that that's that's two of the three. This is if you have time and you have money. But you, you see what happens when you have a low interest rate, low rate of return. It, it takes you a very long time. Like you're not going to make money. All right. So that's why rate of return is so high. Now let's look at scenario two. Okay. Cause remember we said that you need two of the three parts of the wealth triangle. So let's start with, uh, let's say that you have a lot of time. Okay. But you don't have a lot of money. All right. <laughs> and so we'll still give you a hundred years. So, but we're, we're only going to give you like a thousand dollars now. Okay. You just have a thousand bucks, all right? But you're gonna get a really good rate of return. Let's get it, let, let's go at like a thirty percent rate of return. <laughs> Do you see what happens here? It becomes absolutely ridiculous, right? Even even if we, we reduce this down to one dollar, okay? Look at that. In a hundred years, getting that kind of return, right? Even if we reduce your rate of return to twenty percent, you, you see what happens here, right? Even if we reduce it down to fifteen percent, or sorry, fifteen percent, you see what happens here, okay? One dollar becomes this much money. So what does this tell you? This tells you that rate of return is perhaps the most important thing if you have a lot of time. Okay, but remember I said you needed two of the three. So we've, we've explored two of the, of the possible scenarios, but there's three of them, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't have 100 years, all right? You might have 30 years, you might have 40 years. If you're trying to retire early while, while you're young and make money while you're young, you don't have 30 years either. You don't have a lot of time. So the one thing we don't have is time. So what does that mean that we have to have? It means we have to have a lot of capital and we have to have a high rate of return. So let's look at that scenario here. So let, let's look at a scenario where you have, let's say $100,000, okay? We're not even gonna do a, a huge amount of money, okay? And we're not gonna give us 100 years. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna give it 15 years, okay? And we're gonna make your rate of return, let's do 10% and see what happens. Okay, that's not a high rate of return. Okay, so $100,000 at four X's in 15 years. That's not too impressive, not, not really, okay? But let's say that we make a rate of return 30% and watch what happens. Now this becomes $5.1 million, okay, in 15 years. That's, that's not, a, not a super long time. Even if we give ourselves 10 years, we're still at 1.3 million, right? That, that, that's pretty good. That's 10 X, that's 13 Xing our investment, almost 14 Xing our investment in 10 years if we can get a 30% rate of return. Now you might say, well, how are you gonna get a 30% rate of return? That's kind of ridiculous. Well, okay, l let's look at what, what we would do if we're, if we're investing in the stock market, okay? L let's say you're investing in the stock market, all right? And let's say you don't have a lot of money saved. You, you got $10,000, okay? And you're gonna put $10,000 per month in the stock market, okay? And, and let's say that you're gonna try and do this for 10 years, okay? And let's say that, what is your rate of return on the stock market? They, they're saying here 10 to 15%. I, I, I don't know about that. Even in the S&P and the index, are you gonna get, I'll give you 10, okay? In 10 years, you're gonna have about $1.9 million, but you're gonna contribute uh, 1.2 million. Hold on, this, uh, we're looking here, compound it annually, this looks right. Uh, yeah, because you're doing $100,000. Oh, we're doing $10,000 a month here. <laughs> we, we wanna say uh, per year, right? If you're doing $10,000 a month, obviously, right? If you're doing $10,000 per year, $185,000, okay? Not, not a huge amount of money, right? Again, you need that time, right? If you got 30 years to do this, okay, it starts to look better. If you got 40 years, now now it's looking really good, except you know you got inflation to deal with there, right? Plus, if you invest in the stock market, unless you're in a tax deferred plan, you're gonna have to pay taxes on there, okay? So that's, that's not, good, not so good. Now, what if, what if instead of, uh, you know, let's go back to this this 15 year scenario, right? Here, not, not a huge amount of money. But what if instead of getting a 10% return, Okay, let's just look at their projections. They're saying, what if you could get uh, a 15 to 25% return in the real estate? And, and we'll say 25% return. You see how much of a difference that makes? Right, okay, let, let me drop it down. 15% return, get you 100, get you, uh, oh wait, 
15 years, yeah, okay. 15% return gets you $557,000, okay? Contributing $10,000 per year, all right? A 25% return gets you 1.3, right? And the reason why we had this before, we had 10%, right? So, uh, sorry, a 10% return, right? It only gets you $259,000, right? That's, that's stock, you're not gonna get more than 10% return every single year in the stock market. It's just not gonna happen, all right? Like, if you got 15%, that would be amazing. But some years it goes down too, right? But on average, if we said 10%, but on average, it's more like, it's, it's, it's realistically more like seven or 8%, which again, doesn't make that much of a difference in that short amount of time, right? Okay, so so we'll give you the 10, okay? And so you get $359,000 if you do this, all right? $10,000 a year, that's it, that's not much. That's not a lot of money, right? But if you wanna become wealthy, right? You, you need a better rate of return. That's why I'm saying if the stock market, if the real estate only returned you 25%, in 15 years, you'd have 1.3 million, only contributing $10,000 per year, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how real estate returns are actually more like this number, okay? Now we're looking at $5.4 million. Now, you might not get this number exactly, right? But maybe we can get this number. That 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 is doable, okay? And that's only $10,000 a year, right? If you could contribute more, let's say that you can contribute $30,000 a year, what can you do? You can get to $3.2 million in 15 years with $3.2 million is about the amount that I say that makes you financially free where you can live large, okay? Now, I wanna show you the thing that I came here to show you, okay? Because I wanna answer this question. Why is real estate so much of a better deal? I made a tool, okay, that will show this to you, all right? Let, let, me, let me bring this up here, all right? This is my financial freedom calculator, all right? Uh, this is this is something that I created for a program that that I have where I where I coach people and I, I mentor them and show them how to become financially free and walk you through it how to how to do this right and one of the key components of it is eventually getting involved in real estate investment now you might not have the ten thousand dollars per year to invest in real estate right now that's fine okay but you need to be able to get to that point okay and, and hopefully more than than ten thousand. And the way that we do that is by number one, getting you a good job, increasing your, your salary, and then number two, building a business, okay? Because you can generate, you can get a business that generates five to 10K per month. It's not that difficult to do, okay? It takes a little bit of time, you gotta know what to do, but, but that's how we do this, okay? So I developed this spreadsheet for students who come to this program in order to understand what, uh, what they need to do and what their timeline is, right? So what we're gonna do, this is real simple to use, okay? There's a couple things here, okay? Uh, w without giving you all, all, the, all the secrets here. So the first thing we need to know is what is our financial freedom number? So what is our investment goal? So, so what amount of money do you need to accumulate to consider yourself financially free? Okay, now I'll give you a hint on how to figure this out, all right? The way that I figure this out, all right? The way that I help my students figure this out is this. As I say, I take your monthly expenses, all right? And you're financially free when you have enough passive income that covers your monthly expenses. Because then you're free. Your, your life is on mortgage. You, you, can, you can do what you want with your life, okay? You, you, don't have to, you, you don't have to work if you don't want to. You can still work. Most people still work. That's fine. You can run a business, whatever. But you can do what you want to do, and you're not obligated to do it, okay? So let's say that your monthly expenses is $5,000 a month. Okay, now, now that's fairly low, but that's just your expenses. This is, we're just talking about becoming financially free. We're not talking about doing well, right? But you could probably live off, right? If you didn't have to work a job, could you live off of $5,000 a month? You know, if you, you just, you could do whatever you want, you know, but you gotta live off of $5,000 a month. Could you do that? And would you do that? A lot of people would. Okay, now some people wouldn't, but you could, right? Okay, so we're gonna take that $5,000, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work backwards from there. And we're gonna say $5,000 a month, okay, is... Uh, sixty thousand dollars a year. Okay, we're going to divide this by 0 0.05. Okay, <laughs> the reason why we divide it by 0 0.05, all right, is because I always assume that you can get a five percent return on your money. All right, you can always get five percent, pretty much risk free. Right. Okay. So there, there's a lot of ways to do that. I don't need to. You know, you could put in real estate and paid off real estate. You can get five percent. Again, stock market, <laughs> you're going to get at least a five percent return. Right. On on average. Right. Uh, you know, there, there's so many ways you could just, you could do some bonds, you could do some dividend yielding stocks. There, there's ways to get a 5% return on your money. Heck, a lot of times CDs from a bank, depending on the rates, will, will give you a 5% return. So 5% return is, is not difficult to do and you can basically do it passively, right? Now you can get a much better return on your money, obviously, but I'm just saying for retirement purposes. So we can always convert 
net worth into cash flow. So the number that we come up with when we take the $5,000 times 12, okay, which is $60,000, and we divide that by 0 0.05 to represent the 5%, is $1.2 million. So in order to be financially free, if you have $1.2 million worth of net worth, you can have $5,000 a month of income, okay? And you can, you can just live off of that. Now, the only caveat here is that you need to put that money into something that is, is able to be inflation proof, right? So again, if you put it in the stock market, that's gonna be, you know, you're, you're, gonna, get high, you're gonna get higher than 5% return, right? If you put it in real estate, you, you're gonna get, that's a perfect hedge against inflation. But what I could do is, is in this chart, if we just wanted to say, okay, how long will it take me to get to $1.2 million? Right, that's what we would put in here. This is your financial freedom number. Okay, $1.2 million, okay? So then we're gonna put in what is your yearly investment? How much money are you gonna invest per year? Okay, so you can calculate this based on what, what, you're, what you're doing now, okay? And then we just need a few numbers here. Some of these are calculated all automatically, but with my strategy, we're gonna compare this, okay? We're gonna compare the stock market, all right, to investing in real estate, all right? And, and so this strategy that I'm using here, is buying one real estate property per year. That's what these calculations are based on. Now you might say that's crazy. You can't buy one real estate property per year. You can, yeah, you can do that. I, I did it for, for, for a long time, right? Uh, with $10,000, yeah, you could you could buy, if you put 10% down, you could buy $100,000 properties. There's not, it might be hard to find them where you're living, but there are places, there are markets where you can buy that. Uh, probably though, probably, right? You wanna have at least maybe $20,000 a, a year to invest in real estate, okay? And yeah, I understand this is, is, is somewhat simplified. We're not talking about transaction fees and some of the other things that are involved there, but uh, but I've also made this so that it is very conservative in its calculations. So when you include all those things in there, uh, you'll be you'll be fine as well. So roughly, we're talking about $20,000 of investment into, into real estate per year, okay? <clears throat> now, like I said, we can just run these numbers at $10,000 if that's, kind of w what you're thinking that you could invest per year right now, right? Uh, but but let's just look at the numbers and we, we can play around with this, okay? The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of the parameters on this, right? So we're gonna assume, what is the down payment that you're putting on a property, right? So you could put 10% down on a property, all right? Uh, we need to know uh, what percentage is land value. We're gonna say it's 10% of the, of, the, of the property, okay? <clears throat> This is just for depreciation, which is a little bit complicated as far as taxes. You don't really have to worry too much about that. Mortgage term in years, we're gonna do a 30 year mortgage. We're gonna say a 6% interest rate. Okay, when the interest rates were lower, this was even even better, but let's, let's say 6% here, okay? And then uh, we're gonna say that the real estate appreciates, so it gains in value about 4% per year, okay? And then we're gonna say that the rent is 8.5% of the property, okay? Now the reason why I'm using 8.5% is because it's a very conservative number, right? So, so, so think of it this way, right? If you have a purchase price of a property of a hundred thousand dollars, okay, and and you're saying that it's it's eight point five percent, okay, uh, of the, the the annual rent. This is what we're we're looking at here, right? So then, that that means that it's eighty five hundred dollars a year. So divide by twelve, you're getting seven hundred and eight dollars a month. Uh, of the of the rent on, on the property okay that's that's not a lot right you, you could be getting maybe eight nine hundred dollars a month maybe a thousand dollars a month if you find a good deal right depends on the market depends on the conditions but th so this is that's why i'm saying this is fairly conservative okay you could change this number if you want if you say oh, i don't know if i get eight but i get seven percent maybe or, or whatever or maybe you get better than that okay and then we're gonna have the annual rent increase be about four percent right so it's gonna just keep with the, the price which is is usually how how rent goes okay Sometimes it could outstrip it, but for the long term, let, let's keep these things even. Now, you know, you might say, "Oh, well, do houses appreciate four percent per year?" Uh, yeah, sometimes they appreciate a lot more than that. But this is very conservative. Again, we want to be conservative. Property tax yearly is about one percent. Home insurance, it's not even one percent. Let, let's just do 05 percent. Uh, we're going to say there's no HOA fee. We're going to say you have PMI, right? Uh, which is mortgage insurance. When you do ten percent down on a, on a on a loan, you typically have a 1% PMI on, on that loan, which is something you have to, when you do 20% down, you don't have that, okay? And you can drop this later on. So again, this is conservative, okay? Maintenance and other costs as a percentage rent. We're gonna say 10%, just to be, you know, conservative here, it, it's, you know, just to figure out the cash flow, okay? Just, these are some basic numbers here. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, but you know, this is a fairly conservative approach, okay? Now, <clears throat> we're gonna put in our parameters for a stock market. I put 8% here. If you really wanna put 10%, sure. We'll put 10%, I don't, 
you know, I don't think that's really going <laughs> to be, be the case. I don't think you're going to get consistently 10% returns for, let's say, 30 years in the stock market. But, okay, if you believe so, then we can put that in, all right? Uh, your effective tax rate, we want to know what is your tax bracket for depreciation because uh, you get some, some benefit on that uh, in, in real estate, all right? And I'm not even counting it against you for, uh, for, for the stock market, okay? So, so here's what we got here. Okay, and so let, let's look at this, right? So if we just look at this, in order to reach this $1.2 million, if you invest in the stock market, it will take you 26 years to do this. If you invest in real estate using this strategy, it'll take you 14.5 years. That's a lot less time, okay? Now you might say, well, okay, how, how did I get these numbers? Well, let's, let's look at it, right? Okay, uh, by the way, I had a, uh, a, a financial, uh, like uh, basically, uh, advisor quant like <laughs> you know uh, what would you call it like a a couple of of guys that uh, do financial statistics run through this and calculate this for me well check my math on this and and make some some changes so this is legit 100 percent it's been it's been tested by uh, three different people who have said yes this is it right in fact here, here's the, here's the funny story about this thing when I first created it right because I I put out a job to, to hire someone to to look at this and, and look at the numbers, make sure that my calculations were correct and, and fix anything. And there was a couple of fixes in it, but uh, every single guy that I had do this, right? These are experienced people who uh, do these kind of calculations all the time, financial advisors that are really good with math. They said, this is this is crazy, okay? There, there's something wrong with your numbers. Like, this is not, because I showed them how it works. They're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. I'm sorry, like, they, it, it doesn't work like that. Everyone would be investing in real estate. You've got something wrong, but I'll figure it out, and I'll, I'll let you know, right? Afterwards, each one of them came to me, and it was like, what? Well, this is crazy. Like, there was a little bit of error. I fixed this, this thing, but how is everyone not investing? This is insane. Why have I not seen this before? I've been doing financial advising for the, for the last 20 years and I I need to invest in real estate. I never knew this. I never understood this until I saw your numbers on this chart. So, okay, I made believers out of, out of them. All right, so let, let's take a look at this, right? So some simple math here. You can see what a stock market investment, a single investment of $10,000, uh, what, the, what the ROI looks like over time, okay? And I've calculated this out for 30 years. All right, but you know, you can, this is how we're, we're using the, these are the tables we're using, the lookup tables here, okay. So you can see that if you're getting uh, this 10% return, right, obviously in the first year you get 10%, okay. So by by the time in 30 years, you've got a 1,645% return or your $10,000 became $174,494, okay. That's a, with the calculation. Now the real estate's a little bit more complicated, okay. I'll, I'll explain this to you just so you understand. Again, like I said, you can go to chat GPT and, and, and use the, the latest model and, and, and you can derive very similar numbers and it'll show you the calculations and how this, this works, right? So <clears throat> again, in this in this scenario, we're saying that you bought a $100,000 property, you put 10% down, so $10,000, okay? So uh, in, in year one, you'll owe $90,000 on the loan, okay? And you'll make a payment, right? Amortize of $6,538 of that, You'll pay $5,400 in interest and you'll pay $1,138 in, in, uh, in principle, right? A pay down on the loan, right? So as you can see, like loans are stacked so that you're paying the interest at the front. It's not a scam. It's not something that banks are doing to be deceptive. It's just how it works when you amortize something out over a, a period of time, okay? Now, if we change this, this interest rate, right? Uh, when, when interest rates are favorable, real estate becomes even better because let's say we change this to 3%, you can see how much uh, principal, you're paying a lot more principal. Your, your total payment is a lot less, right? And more of it is going to principal. But let's let's leave this at six percent for now. Okay. Now, so so we're, we're calculating principal pay down. This is a benefit to us, right? Because we're paying down the mortgage, so we, we owe less. Okay. And then we can see what the current mortgage balance is, and you can see by thirty years and a thirty-year loan, you should pay it off, and you do. Okay. Now, next thing we need to figure out for the, your investment in real estate is what is uh, the property value? How much is that increasing and what is the rent? Okay, so uh, you know the, the rent increases every single year, obviously uh, property value increases every, every single year. We're doing 4% appreciation. If we did more than that, you know, and you, you could, you could do 4.5%, you could do 5%, whatever. 
uh, this n these numbers would increase, but you can see that a hundred thousand dollar property in thirty years at a four percent return uh, appreciation will get to three hundred twenty four thousand dollars, and that checks that 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 makes sense, right? If you, if you think about properties thirty years ago, they're probably about a third of the, of the cost that they are now. In fact, they're probably more than that, honestly. But right, and, and rent goes up with it as well. Obviously, rent has to stay the same, go up with price. Uh, in some markets, yeah, it it doesn't as much, but uh, in general, that that has to be somewhat true, right? And and really, this is just tracking with inflation okay so you're making money off of inflation in real estate okay um because of leverage all right now so we're, we're gonna now calculate the annual cost right so you've got a you got to pay the mortgage payments okay you got property taxes we said one percent okay and those are going to increase all right based on the price of the property as that increases okay you've got home insurance okay you've got the pmi which is all always the same but like i said the pmi will drop after some time but we're just putting it in there uh, anyway, okay? Uh, so that's why it's conservative. You've got the maintenance, okay? And this is how much you're gonna you're gonna spend in maintenance. And this might be a little bit more, okay? Uh, we, we could change that number a little bit, and, and we can see how that looks, right? You can play with this if if you join the program and, and want to get access to this, okay? And so we see what our total annual costs are, okay? So we're gonna take the annual cost versus our total rent, okay? So in the first year, we're negative on that, okay? So. Uh, We'll look at that, but uh, but before we do, so you can see the operating the, the operating income here, right? We're negative, we're negative uh, for, for a little bit here, okay? Because we have some costs, and, and I, I did a very conservative rent, right? You, you could buy rental and have positive from the beginning. That, that's a good idea, and, and you'd have much better numbers, but, and then we're looking at depreciation. This is kind of a tax write-off. We won't get into too much details here. It, it's very conditional, but approximately, you're gonna have $982 that you're gonna save on income taxes every year by, by owning uh, a property, okay? By owning this property. And now we can calculate what is our net wealth, right? So how much money have we made from the equity that we own in that property plus the cash flow, the, the net cash flow of this, and we can see what this looks like over time, okay? And so if I look at this over time, you can see that, again, at 30 years, this is at $935,000. You can see what this return is. It's 9,256% compared to, in the stock market, 1,645% return. So this is a huge difference over that amount of time. It's a very, very large difference. Again, if we look at the, the value, the straight value, $174,000 versus almost a million dollars, okay? Right, and these are with conservative, num conservative numbers, right? Now, yeah, if we go to a shorter time horizon, it's not as drastic of a, of a change, right? So. What do we have? Like our, our ten year? If we look at our, our ten year, right? In ten years, we had one hundred fifty nine percent return on the stock market, twenty five thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars, and uh, with real estate in ten years, we're at what is this? Uh, one hundred one thousand with a nine hundred fourteen percent return. It's still a lot more, okay? But it's 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 still four times more, but it's not as crazy of, of a difference, right? Okay. So, and then this chart, what we're looking at is, let's say you're buying one property per year, because that was just on one property we calculated, but if you're doing one property per year, then this gets a little bit complicated because we're, we're saying, you know, in, in one year you own one property and this is the, the schedule of the, the cash flow that you're getting, right? And, and rec recognize this number, right? And, and then you have your second year, you have two properties and this one is returning this and that one's returning this one, right? And so you're, we're adding this up and this is how we can see in how many years Right, this one reads across the top. So, like in ten years, if you're buying properties every year, this is what your uh, your, your net profit is. Okay, if you're buying spending ten thousand dollars, right? And we can see this all the way up to to thirty years. Okay, and and so that's uh, that that's basically the chart here, right? So you can play with these numbers, and, and you can see uh, what the difference is. And here's here's kind of a chart that's showing twenty years of the difference in net worth between stock market and real estate based on these these numbers of calculation, right? Even from the very beginning, real estate. Uh, is ahead, but you can see how much it becomes ahead over a 20 year time period. This is huge. This is why it does make a huge, huge difference, right? Especially if you want to retire young, right? And, and again, I didn't make up these numbers, right? You can throw the numbers in here. I showed you how compound interest calculator works, right? And, and you can look at this and you can see what the difference is, right? And, and if you don't like my numbers, you can change them, right? And maybe you're gonna able to save more than $10,000 a year. Maybe you're able to invest $30,000. A year right and you get to that 1.2 million dollars in 8.8 .8 years okay but maybe you want to get there faster than that then you got to increase this amount or maybe like you, like I was saying I think you want to have about three million dollars okay about 300,000 
if you need $3 million, right, which is $150,000 a year to live off of, I think that's pretty, pretty good, okay, and you're doing $30,000, it's gonna take you 24.3 years in the stock market. It's gonna take you 13.4 years in, re in real estate, right? Now, again, if you only have 10,000, look how long it's gonna take you to reach this number. Are you ever gonna reach this number? With stock market, it's gonna take you 35.1 years, okay? And, and at that point, how much inflation is there gonna be where in, in 35.1 years, is that $3 million even gonna be worth that? Three? It's, not, it's not gonna be worth nearly that, that amount, but it'll only take you 20.7 years still in real estate. So in real estate, you could still hit it and retire young, right? If you're 20, you could do it by 40. If you're 30, you could do it by 50, right? But if you're relying on the stock market, it's not gonna happen. And again, I'm giving you a 10% in the stock market. Let, let, let's make these numbers a little bit more realistic, okay? And let's say that the stock market average return is gonna be about 8%, right? Uh, it's actually probably less than that, but let, let, let's give you 8% there. And now you can see, right, 40 years versus 20 years, it cuts it in half. Okay, huge, huge difference here, right? And again, interest rates might go down in, in real estate, right? If we had more favorable conditions, or again, if we, we change this to 4.5% appreciation, okay, which I think is pretty reasonable considering the inflation here, Look how, look how that it changes. It changes the, the equation here, right? So you can play with these numbers and you can figure this out, but no matter how you do it, well, here's another scenario. Let's look at one more scenario real quick, okay? Let's look at putting 20% down on the property, okay? So so instead of, uh, instead of doing 10%, right? We're gonna do 20%, okay? Uh, because that's a little bit more realistic. It's, it's sometimes hard to find a loan that does 10%. I, I, I can show you how to do it. I've done it plenty of times, but sometimes that, that's a little bit harder to do for, for people, especially investment property. So we're gonna say 20%, but then we're gonna get rid of the PMI on this because you don't have that anymore. Okay, so at at 20%, what happens? It's almost the same. So it doesn't even matter that much if you put 10 or 20% down on the property, okay, right? Um, and again, you know, let's say that your interest rate is a little bit higher let's say 7.5%, that's a pretty high interest rate, okay? It, it doesn't change this very much. So so, so, so look at this really quick, real quickly, okay? Because this is, answers the question for, you, for a lot of people. Because they're like, okay, well, what when the interest rates were 3%? Yeah, that was a really good time, okay? It was 18.2 years at, at $10,000, okay? But, but, but let's say they're 8%. How does that change the equation? It, it only adds a couple of years to it, right? So, so why, am I, why am I showing you this? Right? Because I want you to understand this. Look, people right now are complaining about interest rates. They're saying that the interest rates are too high and I'm gonna invest in real estate when the interest rates drop. And they're saying that because it, it's just not a good deal anymore. Now, look, okay, if interest rates are 8%, here's what's gonna happen to you, all right? I'll, I'll show you, right? In the short term, it's gonna suck, okay? In the short term, when we look at the schedule, here's what's gonna happen. You see this, this number? It, it's more negative, right? You're gonna be losing money for the first few years, a little bit more money, right? In, in this in this calculation, right? Again, if I change this to 3%, okay, we're actually positive. <laughs> we're, we're, getting a, 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 we're getting a positive cash flow from the very beginning, okay? If I change this to 8%, ouch, we're negative for the first three years only. But, but you see how it doesn't change very much the overall picture? from 20.2 years, you're still killing the stock market. You're still destroying the stock market, okay? You're still destroying the stock market, right? 8% versus 3%. Not a huge difference, a couple of years here, but still twice as fast as the stock market, okay? And you can play with these numbers. Like I said, th these are these are accurate numbers, all right? So, so, so this should answer a couple of questions for you, right? First question is, Stock market or real estate? Why is real estate so much of a better deal? This is why, right? And if you want just the simple math on this, just a simple, just to wrap your, your brain around this, why does it work like this? Again, you can look at the equation and see that. L let me give you the simple math on this, okay? Which is this. <clears throat> if you buy a, a property for $100,000, you put 10% down, okay? You put $10,000 into it. If it appreciates 4% in one year, that means that the value of the property goes from hundred dollars to $104,000. That means that that you, you've gained $4,000 of equity, of, of return on that money, but you've only put 10,000 in. So your 10,000 becomes 14,000, that's a 40% return, 
See, the reason why real estate is so good is because in the first year, when you put 10% down and property goes up 4%, you're getting a 40% return on your money. You're getting more than that because you're also going to have a principal pay down and depreciation and, and all that. So you might get 50% return, but that's a ridiculous rate of return. Remember when we went to the compound interest calculator? Remember how crazy that was? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Okay. So it's a no contest, right? Because even small amounts of increases in rate of return make a huge difference when compounded over large amounts of time. All right. It makes a huge difference. And so that's why real estate is, is it, it's so much of a better option. And okay. So, so just from, from the get go that, that number one, that's what you should be doing. Absolutely. Don't put money in the stock market. Stupid. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a couple other reasons, reasons in, in answer to some questions, right? What about the, the interest rate? What about stock market? What about real estate prices being high and interest rates being high again? it doesn't matter very much in the long run, right? Because if interest rates are 3% versus 8%, you could see that it doesn't make, it doesn't change the equation a lot. It, it, it your cash flow looks a little bit different. That's why, you know, when I, when I'm coaching guys uh, all time, I get into a situation where they're like, Oh, well, it's, it's, it's like negative cash flow. Yeah, I get it. I don't want negative cash flow either, but you got to think long term on this. Like it, I don't care what the interest rate is right now Buy the property, right? That, that's what you want to do is you want to buy the property and make the investment. Right. You're thinking about the interest rate too much and interest rates. When they drop, you can refinance. Okay. If they go up from here, you're going to be glad that you bought now. Right. So either way, but in the long term, right, it doesn't matter that much what the interest rate is on real. It seems kind of mind boggling, but when you look at the math, you can see that it doesn't matter that much. And I'll tell you the same thing applies to the price. Even if you pay too much for property because prices are high and they're going to come down eventually, yeah. Okay. What, what could happen is you could temporarily have a dip in crisis. That that's fine. I had that happen myself. Okay. But then as it appreciates, it will recover. And usually the recovery is faster than the 4% appreciation. Okay. And then the, the final thing here, right? Is that we, we got to talk about taxes, tax situation. Okay. B the difference between real estate investment and stock market. Okay. Now, if you put your money in a 401k or a tax, uh, a tax deferred option retirement plan. Yeah. You're not going to pay taxes on the gains immediately. Okay. But you're going to take, you're going to, you're going to pay them before you put them in, or you're going to pay them when you take them out and you got to be 65 and a half or whatever age, you know, that, that makes it so you cannot retire young. Okay. So yeah, if you, if you have no tax taxes on your, your compounding investment, but that's what we're calculating with the real estate with the, with this, these numbers. Okay. Then, then yes, you're going to get that return that, that I showed you in that, that chart, which is still not anything compared to real estate. Okay. So, but if you're, if you're not, if you're just taking money and you're just putting it in the S and P 500, you're just putting it in index funds, you're going to pay capital gains taxes on that. That's 20%. Like you're not going to be able to compound nearly as, as much. And it's going to take a big chunk of your money. All right. And later down the road, when, when you do have to pay taxes, even when you are retired, they're going to be, it's going to be bigger than it is now, most likely. Okay. With real estate, you never have to pay taxes. All right. I don't have the time to go into the details of this. If you're really, really interested in finding out the details, uh, join me in, in my program. It's called the well that everyone's dry. I'll put a link down below where you can apply to be in the program. I accept a certain number of people every single month. All right. If you've watched this video so far and you, you get what I'm saying, it might make sense to you. Okay. Um, if you apply for the program, I'll send you this financial freedom calculator uh, for free, right? Just got to click the link. I'll, I'll send you, but you got to apply. You got to put a, a serious application for, for the program and, uh, and I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll, I'll put the link down below, but, but, but what I was saying here, okay. And you, you have to understand is that there's, there's huge tax benefits to real estate, right? So first of all, you can do what's called a 1031 exchange. So you, you, when you, when you sell a property, you can exchange it for a bigger property. I did this myself. I sold four of my properties, uh, exchange it for a, a much bigger $1.2 million property. Okay. And never pay taxes. The taxes are deferred permanently on that. You don't ever have to sell. I have a lot of properties I've never sold. Okay. And, and what happens is when you pass, uh, the, the tax basis in those properties gets reset, meaning that your heirs, uh, they, ne they never have to pay taxes on it right? <laughs> okay. Uh, there, there's the, the depreciation, the tax benefit that you can get uh, from that. I just bought a, a property this year that if you do short-term rental, in fact, there, there's 
other benefits that you can do. We're not getting into all the details of that, but essentially I took my federal tax bill and I used it to, to pay for property. Like I had the government pay for my property. Okay. And then, you know, you, you've got real estate is operating as a business. And so you've got your income that's being, that, that you're generating from the cash flow. It's taxed at a different rate, right? So overall, when, when you're investing in real estate, you have a huge amount of tax benefits and you don't have to pay those taxes. This compounding is happening before you pay tax. You can also do cash out refinance where you're pulling money out of the property and you don't pay taxes on loans, right? So again, I don't want to get too complicated here, but let me just say there's a lot of ways to not pay any taxes at all on real estate or pay very little taxes on, on real estate investment. Okay, so hopefully this clears it up. If you have some questions, all right, uh, leave, 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 a, leave a comment down below and ask me. I'm, I'm happy to answer them. And then, like I said, I've got the application for the well that never runs dry uh, down here. If you apply, I'm going to send you the spreadsheet for, for free. Just just ask me for it. I will I will send it to you. And, uh, you know, and the program is a six-month mentorship program with me, weekly uh, coaching calls. We're going to help you do this, right? I've got all this, the, the information about how to, to do this, and I'm going to help you. And, and this is why... You know, it's so important to understand this because if you don't get this and you're just putting your money in, in the stock market or, or worse, you, you are, you're wasting time, right? Even if you're not making a lot of money, right? Like I said, $10,000 a year, you could save in 20 years, you, you can, you can, you can have $3 million, right? That's what, that's what the numbers show here, right? Again, let, let's look at this one more time, okay? In 20 years, you can have $3 million, but you don't even need $3 million, right? If you're like, okay. I can, I could retire off of $1.2 million. Like, like we said, $5,000 a month of income you could do in 12.4 years. Right. But, but let's say that you're, you're like, okay, well, what, what if you build a business? What if I help you build a business and that business generates you $5,000 a month? So now you can invest $60,000 a year. What does that do to the numbers? Okay. Now you could do it in five years. You could be done financially free in five years. Even if you want to get to this $3 million number, what, what does this, what does this look like? If, if you're getting some money from, from your business here, 8.2 years, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, right? And again, hey, there's no reason why you can't have a business that generates you $10,000 a month. I, I got one of my best coaching clients, Gregory, got him up to $3 million a year, okay? And a lot of that profit, right? You know, he was, at one point, he was making $2 million a year profit, right? There's plenty of guys that, that are making ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month that I've helped them build a business. It takes some time to do that, but you could see how you can reach this, this number. It doesn't mean you have to quit working either. This just make, means that you're free, okay? So this is why it's so important, right? And understanding the math on this, I, I think a lot of people just don't get it and that's why there is this contention and, and a lot of people think, oh, you know, the real estate, it's the same, it, you know, it, stock market, investment. you know, again, here's the other thing that you, you might be worried about. It's like, okay, well, real estate investment, it's complicated, you know, tenants, rent, all this stuff, right? There's risk involved. I cover all that stuff, right? If, if you join my program, I'll coach you through it. I have an entire course in the program on how to buy your first property. I cover every single step of the way, how to get property management in place. Right? I've been doing this for 24 years, all right? My, I, I generate about fifteen to $20,000 a month of passive income from, from real estate, all right? Uh, it, could be, it could be even more if I would have known what, 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 I, what I could teach you now, right? And so it's not as complicated, as difficult as what you think it is. Right? You just have to understand how to do this. And if you do it in a smart way, the way that I do it, it becomes risk-free. There, there's almost no risk at all. Where the stock market can take a loss. You're not gonna take a loss on, on real estate. You're never gonna lose your capital in real estate if you do it in the way that, that, that I'm telling you. Right? So I, I get it that, that you know you might not be 100% convinced of this, but like I said, you can check the numbers yourself. Fill out the application down below and I will send you this calculator. You can look at the numbers on the calculator. You can run it through chat GPT and you can see that I'm not lying. I got, I got, this is, this is how it works. This is the real, you can play with the compound interest calculator and you can test the numbers and see, all right, if you get this re return, if you have this much time, if you have this much money, you know, how long does it take you to, to reach a certain amount? You know, m most people, they're just assuming that if they do smart things in life, Right, that they're going to become financially free, they're gonna become retired. And that's that's an incorrect assumption. If you don't have a plan, if you don't know how you're gonna get there, if you don't have a timeline, like again, I can show you in this calculator where you have a timeline and you know exactly how long it's gonna take according to this plan, then it's, it's probably not gonna happen. It's probably not gonna happen. 
probably not gonna happen. You're, you're not just gonna magically get there, right? Every financial advisor, and then I'll tell you one last thing here, okay? For, for those of you that are sticking on for this long, all right? If you don't wanna listen to it, you just wanna get the application, you can go ahead and, and do that. But can you see why one of the first things I do with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients that pay me a lot of money, pay me $1,500 an hour to coach them, is I, I have them dump, I have them empty their 401ks, okay, and pay the penalties on it. Because it's stupid. It's stupid to put your money in a 401k. I understand, like, no, it's a smart thing to do if you don't know what I'm telling you. But once you see what I'm telling you, once your eyes are open to this, it is stupid to put your money in a 401k, right? And wait till you're 65 and a half or whatever age to retire. And you're thinking, okay, well, it's tax for Even if your company matches, it is still stupid. Because I could, I could run the numbers and I could show you how if you compared putting your money in the 401k with the company match versus real estate, where you're getting 30 to 40% returns or 50% returns on your money, why no matter how much they match you, right? You're gonna come out way ahead in real estate and you'll have access to that capital and you're not gonna pay taxes on it, right? So that's why it is just, it is it is it does not make any sense to put your money into a 401k or retirement plan, okay? Those are for people that wanna try and retire when they're 65 and a half years old and don't wanna do it sooner, okay? It, it, if, if you, if you, if that's you, then that's, that's fine. It's still not a smart move, but sure. That, that's, it's fine. Right. But you can see why it might seem stupid, right? Financial advisors hate me. They're like, well, are you crazy? Why are you telling people to take their money out of 401k? I'll tell you why, because if you look at the actual numbers, you will see that it's a no brainer. It's not even, you know, again, I argue with people all the time about, oh, my company's matching. Yeah. But I can show you the math that shows you how even with a company match of 100%, it's still, you might think it's free money. You're missing out on the free money that you could be making investing in real estate and getting a much higher return on your money. Does that make sense? All right. Anyway, if you wanna get some help, you know where the link is, it's down below. Uh, you can also email me at john at bulldogmindset.com and uh, I hope to see you in the program. Uh, happy to send you the spreadsheet. See you next time.